Cool. What's going on, people? It is day 23. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. So, I want to say that uh, thanks to everyone that showed up today. I appreciate your time and attention. And the third leg is changing up a little bit, as you can see. We're going to work on more enhancement, a few more nuts and bolts things. So, if you're new, this is how the presentation goes. I'll give the presentation. If you hear anything that is pertaining to the presentation and you want to ask a question, just go ahead and ask the question. And when I come out of the presentation, I will answer it and uh, we can talk about it. So with that, to respect your time, because I know you're busy out there hustling and stuff, let's get to it. If you're new, sheet of paper, pen or pencil calendar. Because the task that we're doing now are more involved and they take more time planning and activity. So you're going to need a few tools to help you go through the process. We say this every webinar day. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. Mean that. All right. We're going to talk about this last leg on what I do. And I'm going to give you the method to the madness. Day, you know, the first leg, day one through 10, the second leg, days 11 through 20, that was to get your activity level up. This is about activity. That's what this course is about. If you're not willing to do the task or willing to do the works, you're wasting your time being here. Simply put. But what I have found out in several businesses, I've had 10 first five were failures they were turkeys gobble gobble but they were valuable turkeys because i learned something from each one so the deal is if you want and this is going to be somewhat of a detour it is um a different mindset because it looks like you're slowing down but you're really not speeding you're really or speeding up when you think of it from a long-term perspective because take my YouTube channel long-term project when I first started with the videos I had no clue to where it was gonna go I didn't really have a firm understanding of the power of YouTube until about two three years in I knew it was getting me sales but I study YouTube a lot excuse me and I look at stuff because YouTube is, I believe, seven years old now. I believe it's seven years old. I'm going on eight. And a lot of people that came early did really well because it was very, it, they got in early and there was only MySpace. There was no Twitter. There was no Facebook. There was none of this stuff. So they were able to do a video and distribute it through their MySpace friend list and it just spread like wildfire. Because a lot of people in the beginning, it was nothing for someone to start a YouTube channel and have a thousand subscribers in the month. It was nothing because it was they were new and video was very expensive to do. 2005, 2006, if you had a video camera, you had a little cheese. That wasn't like something that everyone just had. And the cameras on phones were not even close to what they are now. But I looked at what happened to a lot of the early youtubers many of them went to the wayside because they started with comedy or they started with some type of shit or something like that and they were just doing videos pretty much like my channel and well i actually my channel started with the purpose to make money so it was a different mindset from the beginning but i noticed that if you want long-term effort you've got to pick something or a certain topic and kind of ride it for a while because going back with the storage auction business if you've known me for any length of time because i started this in 2009 i did not push storage auction stuff as hard as i could for the simple fact that i knew it wasn't going to be a long-term deal storage auctions are very hard storage auctions are very dirty you need a truck you need there's so many things that you need that I actually talk about in my book that I knew that most of America was not going to be able to really stick with it long term, which means it was going to be a passing fancy. It did last longer than I thought it would. That was a surprise. It did last much longer than I thought it would, but I knew it was going to peter out at some point. So 
I always wanted to do something differently. I always, because um, I used to have a subscription to Nightingale Conat, which is the company that produces Earl Nightingale stuff and other things. And I used to get the cassettes and they gave you like 30 days to try them. And then if you don't like them, you just send them back. So I always thought that stuff was cool, but I never, when I heard about it, when I knew about Brian Tracy and these other people, I wanted to kind of do that stuff, but I didn't have the chops. I didn't have the experience and none of it was there. So I always wanted this channel to do something a little differently. But if you've got a pony that's going to win a lot of races, you ride that pony. And that's what I did with storage auctions. And then when I saw that was I actually saw the trend declining. And that's why I never really put a lot of money into it, because storage auctions are fun. Storage auctions made me a lot of money. Storage auctions gave me incredible experiences but if you want to have a certain kind of life that the life that i want to have now want of freedom it just wasn't going to work so i knew the party was going to come to an end and it was a hard 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 ending but onto the long-term money the channel had to change hustlers food 30 days to 2500 dollars how to start a business is a concept content that i can do forever that i am innately passionate about because of i've been reading ink magazine since high school i've always loved this whole thing about businesses developing uh how to make money how companies started this is just what i've always done and i love and the thing is it's more fun because i am now on the founder side of the desk versus the Oh, how can I be like those cool guys in the Ink magazine? I learned a lot from reading the magazine over the years. It's changed. It's more it's more brief than it's ever been before because they used to really get into it. Like when Cable Tron, Cable Vision came out, and just how people just did these incredible things without social media. So this can be my long term pony. There's a many books that are coming. There's a lot of stuff that's going to fit this concept that I couldn't do with storage auctions. The storage auction business actually was a fruit room that I leveraged into this business because they're not far removed from each other because so many of the principles apply. So for you, in terms of your long-term money, there you know there's a method for you know, your long-term business goals because remember, if you've been here from day one, remember you're going to start four businesses. You know, I didn't forget. And with this long-term outlook, Going back to uh, your list, because you're about to get married. Yes, yes, yes. I know you're like, what? I'm already married. You're about to commit bigamy because you're about to get married to an ideal or a concept. If you're new, this is going to seem a little strange. It's going to seem perhaps like Greek to you because many of the things that you need to get to this point, you have to go back to the earlier weeks. The, the webinar is set up where days hook into each other and the work that you did the first week and the work you did the second week is gives you the ability and the tools and the material and the data to do later exercises so this may be really really confusing for some people if you're new but if you've been here for a while you totally get it this is the juncture that you're going to pick one business on your list a good one one for the long haul see what you can do now is have a hustle and let, let's just define a hustle ebay can be a hustle amazon can be a hustle amazon fba can be a hustle i do not believe amazon fba e none of these things are going to be long-term hustles i think you can be on ebay or amazon for years i really do but there's something that seems to happen with companies when they get to a certain size that they start biting the hand that feeds them and ebay's getting rid of a lot of the people that built that platform for some reason so those are good hustles and when i say hustles i'm talking about you you could turn into a million dollar hustle an eight figure hustle but it's not going to be a 10 15 20 year hustle it could be a five-year hustle or it could be a six-year hustle because I've noticed something. When I go back to eBay and look for the companies that I used to emulate, for the people that I respected, 
for people that copied their business model, look for advice. None of those people are there. The ones that I can find that still kept the name, many of them have their own websites now. All of them left eBay for a reason. You get with eBay, you hit a ceiling, and it just becomes like, I'll, I'll just give you what happened with us. When you're paying three to $4,000 a month in fees, you start thinking differently. It's like, hmm. Because the thing is, eBay has traffic. That's the big thing. But you start thinking, okay, this is a lot of money. You're paying six thousand dollars in fee. This is a lot of money. You start really looking at that very, very hard because as you go up and you sell a lot of stuff, sometimes you experience margin compression. But it is really, really hard to be a long time. And I know there's people like, oh, I've been on eBay a decade. I've been there since day one. Then I will say, are you a large seller? Because anyone can be on eBay for twelve years and sell three, four, five, six, seven. 8,000 a month. Yeah, you can do that a long time because you're, you're under the radar. You don't promote, you don't pose a lot of risk for the platform. But when you're doing 2,000 a day, 8,000 a day, 10,000 a day, you know, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600,000 a month, you expose eBay to a lot of risk. And if you're selling in a category that's non risky, they like kiss you and let you run on. But if you, sell in the category that they deem risky they'll be all over you so it's very challenging to be there long term only thing that you can do long term is your business and this is the thing you know it may be um you know something that you're already doing but on your list like in the early days it was like you know come up with all these ideas validate these ideas so what you're going to do is if it's not your main gig and we're going to talk about how to create different um, forms of management you're going to take this one business and the thing is you're going to grow it but you're going to grow it purposefully you're not going to i want to make as much money as possible no no you're going to have a plan because i'll tell you what i'm doing 30 days to 2500 it started off as an ideal it's something i toyed around with and i was like okay and then you know taking this course i said well i'm going to validate it i'm going to give it away for free if you show up between four and five, you get it for free. If you want recorded sessions, then there's a cost. And essentially, I validated this business model because it's something I like to do. I have fun. I meet very interesting people and it fulfills a need because many people kind of disagree with the premise because of all the businesses I started, I can help anyone in any business. You know, I don't specialize and I don't mess with finance or accounting. Uh, I would never do that stuff because that's a different animal. But if you are buying something or selling something, be it a product or service, I can help you. And this is a business that just can grow and grow and grow. And essentially, since you're here today, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the future. Because now the business has been validated, many people, and I'm very, very happy that you're making money. A lot of people are making money. We've got someone in this group who's done 30,000 already. This person had an established business. So it's a proven concept, it's a little wild. And what I'm gonna do is after the 30 days, because I haven't really decided, since I know I'm gonna continue to do this, I may stop this at Friday and then go into the enhanced version. I don't know yet, but essentially this is gonna be a place that you can come, whether you have any experience or not, you can start a business from scratch or if you have experience, you can take your business to another level. You can extract more money out of your business because I've been in so many tight situations in business. I can like, oh, this is what this guy's going through or this is what this girl's going through. And I can provide answers. And if I can't provide answers, I can talk to one of my friends and get you an answer very quickly. And it's I became a resource out of failure because we live in a world where it's moving really really fast but if you pick the right business something that works well with your life plan something we talked about in the early days then you grow it slowly you can groom it the dog is cracking me up i love the dog the dog's cracking me up you can groom it because this comes from waffle house i studied waffle house and when they started they had one location for about 10 years and they worked out all of the kinks and then they started expanding and growing like crazy with a very simple 
menu. Waffle House is Waffle House. When you go in there, you know there are some that are better than others. There are some the staff's friendlier. But pretty much from location to location, the experience is pretty similar. They've um, popularized the concept. You know what they have on the menu. is It doesn't change. It's their execution. And it's the containment of cost that makes Waffle House works. You ever notice that they're shaped a certain way? I met a Waffle House guy and he said that they can open up a, a location in a week once the building's done. A week. Be open and running in a week. That's how tight Waffle House has this game. And the thing is, another thing about starting and building your business over time is it builds a certain level of robustness. I, I have a friend that owns a grading business that he got from his father. He doesn't have to do nothing to make money because his father set up a lot of contact. I mean, even during this recession, because, you know, graders do a lot of stuff with uh, developers. He still was working because of, I mean, the company was so freaking old, so big, and he ran into some problems and he had to go in the office and work it. And he just went through all of the customers that his father, because his father was like very Calvinistic. He kept folders of clients. He just got in the office one night and just started going through folders, started calling companies and found work because the company was so old. Uh, another person I know, he inherited a company from his father. And he inherited a 30, 40 year old corporation, I believe, at the time with a great paydex. So it was like just incredible what they were able to do because the company had been in business so long. So don't think of slow growth as painful because the thing is, going back to what I said, you can grow your main business the way you want to and you can have an eBay hustle or you can have an Amazon hustle because we're going to talk about that in 30 days to 2500. But you can have something that makes enough money to pay all your bills while you're working on this other business. Because since I've been doing this and you know, I'll, once again, I'll talk about other business. Uh, to me, I was doing a lot of stuff with Create Space. I was doing a lot of stuff with Amazon Kindle. I still do a little bit with Amazon Kindle, but I am looking at the future and understand that some of my ideals are a little much for people because many of my writing friends think, why aren't you putting all your stuff on uh, Kindle? And it's like, um, I'm tribe building. And when I say that, they look at me like I'm crazy because the thing is, when you do tribe building, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later in this webinar, is it's a different mindset. But once you pick that business, you know, if it's not your main business, let's let's talk about it. if it's your main business, you're going to ball out. If it's not your main business and you have one of these other hustles going on, you're going to consistently devote an hour a day on it. Just an hour. You're going to use the power of six. And for those who are asking about the power of six, I'm actually going to do a power of six webinar after 30 days is over. And you're just going to consistently do things for your business. So your thing is not trying to get money. Your thing is trying to create value. Because a lot of times when you're creating value, you're not getting money immediately. You'll get the money later, which means that starving off that immediate gratification monster but that's the thing because some of the videos that make me money on youtube didn't make me money originally I, one of them actually didn't really start making a lot of money until like a year later don't know what happened it was just like well all of a sudden the video was getting a lot of views and started making money got one video that makes me like 100 bucks a month just one and it didn't do that in the beginning which is another thing with slow growth you can kind of look back and go, oh, this works. That's why I take so many chances because you never know which video. A video I did out of pure frustration, uh, how to clean out your Toshiba laptop because my laptop was just shutting down. I mean, I'm processing the video and it's like fan comes on, then pop. I hear that pop, sucker shut off. And then it cools off, I couldn't do anything. So essentially, I could not work while the computer was taking a nap. And I, was just, I did that video and that video has like 100,000 views and I get comments and stuff and people email me about that video and it's like three years old or four I'm, I'm not sure so you never know but as i build this channel because i'm still building it and the thing is life is good and life is long this is what a lot of people don't understand with 
Bam, let's do it. Bam, let's make it happen. Bam. With your hustle, you make it happen. You 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 get all the money you can with your hustle because hustles are temporary. Temporary being anywhere from a matter of days up to a matter of a few years. Hustles are temporary, but your main business, something that you're grooming, something that you're building can last forever. Now, let's get to storefront preaching. And this is what I'm doing right now. I am the start your own business, fuck a job evangelist. And the reason I am that is because having my own business saved my life. There was a time I couldn't get a job. I'm doing the my life as a day laborer. I mean, the video I'm putting up tomorrow is a trip. I went through many years of showing up at a little dank place at 430 in the morning, hoping with glee to go to some shitty day labor job because I didn't have any money. I had I was in that position. I mean, where you just don't be straight up. You didn't, I didn't feel like a man. I wouldn't make any money. There was times that I would work all day, and when I cash my little check at the Chinese store, I had twenty eight dollars for a whole day's work. Twenty eight dollars for eight to nine hours of backbreaking work. I know what it's like. That's one of the reasons I'm so arrogant. People are like, oh, you're so arrogant. I feel I've earned to be the earned earned the uh, earned this persona that I have because I know that some people who will who, if they walked the path I walked on they would have been an alcoholic a drug dealer or a drug addict or dead so I am the storefront preacher on starting your own business because in one of my groups which I just made private and you know because everyone that knows each and one everyone knows everyone in that group and they're all friends and they contribute to it and no one else can join there's been several people in that group who had jobs who got laid off and went straight into their hustle and they never even looked for another job. You know, and it's like, yeah, I'm on unemployment. I'm going to milk this. But, you know, I put my hustle up and I am like my hustles got me like five hundred dollars short of where I was on my job and I'm getting unemployment. Many of those people actually got in a situation where they came up by losing their job because they had a hustle or a business already in place when they got <clears throat> the uh the, the pink slip so with storefront preaching and building your tribe you've got to pick one of your ideals of con concepts some that you can stick with long time that's why i say you're getting married that's why <clears throat> this is like the 10 20 30 year business and it, the thing is it doesn't have to be sexy i just gave you a waffle house Restaurant business is notoriously hard, but Waffle House is still chugging along with a very simple menu. Why does Waffle House work? If you're in Alabama and you go to a Waffle House in North Carolina, pretty much your experience is going to be the same. That's why people go to Waffle House. Consistency, continuity. So with your business, you can start like there's someone selling soap. You can scale soap up to a billion dollar business. Don't believe me, ask Procter & Gamble. You can sell, I mean, anything. If just about the time and building your tribe. And see, this is where the tribe building becomes very, very important. I'm a writer. I talk to a lot of writers and sometimes I just shut up because many things I say in the group or stuff, I'm killing sacred cows. And now I just kind of lean up against a tree. I don't mess with the sacred cows because the sacred cows have a following. Um, um. And next thing you know, I'm getting shot up with arrows of people's derision. So I've learned to really just kind of keep some of my opinions to myself and just talk to people who can embrace them. Because as I was talking to, with a friend, I did not really take into account that the life that I have is a life so unlike of many other people. You know, I, I just went for a walk in the middle of the day, something I do frequently. I pretty much, unless I'm here for f between four and five, I don't have a schedule. I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to go out and drive. I don't have to do, I don't have to do anything. I am seriously halfway retired, meaning that, you know, I work, but I have a great 90% control of my time. When I, you know, if I'm doing a project, I, if I'm not doing the project, I have 100% control of my time. That for many people is wealth to be able to control your comings and goings and still earn a decent to great income. That is wealth. So I've already reached that retirement stage of having control of my time. 
long before, you know, like I said, that's one of the reasons I did the video. It's like, I'm never retiring. Why? I'm already there. If I want to go to the Bahamas next week and spend a week there, I could and still make money. But let's go back to why is that possible? It goes back to the tribe building. This business model, which has kind of pivoted here and there, now that we've settled in, you know, I am the start your own fucking business evangelist. That might be a t shirt because years ago, I had a friend and we were both at Fort McPherson. We both worked in a lab and we had this conversation and it was applicable to black men. It says a black man, you got to have your master's degree minimum or start your own business. And I did the business thing and he became an attorney. I actually have a new mindset. Go to school if you want to. If you feel you have the need to do that, fine. Knock yourself out. But I have seen too many times that a person of average intelligence start a business and is making more money than doctors. I've seen it. I live in a neighborhood full of people like that. I've seen it too many times. It's and the, the, the thing is, it's so simple. When you have a profession where you go into an office and you do something, you're only serving a limited number of people. When you have a business or a store that's open to the public, you're serving a lot of people. The more people that you serve, the more money that you make. It's a very simple equation that a lot of smart people miss. Which brings me to, as you're building your business, you're going to think about long-term service. I know that I can be a resource and benefit to entrepreneurs, hustlers, forever and forever and forever. I have failed more times than the average person. I failed maybe more times than 10 people put together. And from that failure came many, many experiences, many, many nuggets of wisdom and many ways to learn how to do stuff. I can I just look at life totally different because of all those failures. So as you're building your business, think service. What you know, like okay, like someone who's I put on my Facebook page and I thought this was just dynamite because it was in Lima, Peru, that someone created this this uh, engineering technical school to create this billboard that draws the moisture out of the air and puts it in these big tanks and provides a water source for people who don't have water. I thought it was freaking awesome. So that's service. And the thing is, that billboard and what they did for the people in Lima, Peru, I I'm telling you that what they did, they're now selling that somewhere. I'm telling you they're selling it somewhere because they did it. They tested it. They validated it the video. They're, they're, they're selling that. And I'm telling you, it's not cheap. So think of something that, you know, provides your tribe long term service, something. It could be food. It could be a product. It could be clothing. It doesn't have to be complicated. That's the thing. Everyone's trying to create like the next Twitter or the next Facebook when the Waffle House is doing fine, and it's a privately held company. Waffle House makes millions of dollars per day. Millions of dollars per day. Selling a very mundane menu. Just think about that. Just really, really think about that. So as you're putting together your thing, Think of service, 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 service. How can you serve your customer? And this is from Earl Nightingale because that's something I struggle with because I wanted to be a writer and I got into Amazon and I got into the create space in my business sense. And I, I will say that being a business person first tremendously helped me as a writer because many creative people get the shaft because they have no idea what business is about. That's why they sign bad contracts. That's why they sign their because they have no clue. And what's really bad, they don't want to know. This is like, oh, I just want to create and, you know, someone else handles that. And next thing you know, they're eating Alpo out of the can when they're 60. And then some family that got rights to their work is billionaires. Happens all the time because the game is like this. It's not who made it. It's who owns it. Just because you made it. Just cut. Oh, I think Steve Jobs got the first operating system from Apple for like 500 bucks. He didn't make it. He bought it. <laughs> so just business is a different thing. And when you're doing your business, you can create that sandbox, that environment that you want. Now. Now that you're looking at this from a long term perspective and you're going to use the power of six to build this. It's like, OK. The pressure's off because you're building value. 
you've got your hustles. Like I said, in 30 days, 25 hours, we're going to talk about a lot of hustles because, you know, it'll be the core thing, which is this. And then we'll talk about hustles because you got to eat. You know, you got to make money while you're building your business and getting a part time job now isn't what it used to be when I was out there with jobs. It's not even close. I remember being able to go out and find a few jobs and bust an extra thousand a month. I mean, I worked a lot of hours, but it was doable. That's not really easy to do for a lot of people now. It's like you barely getting enough hours with your regular gig. So, you know, trying to trying to find a job part time. And that's something else, too, that I've noticed when I go to restaurants or Lowe's, I see a lot of elderly people working there. You're not just competing with the pimply faced kid out of high school. You're competing with your grandfather now for that same nine to twelve dollar hour job because grandpa needs it to supplement his Medicare and to pay for his uh, heart medication, which is like five hundred bucks a month. Many elderly people are working jobs just to pay for a few prescriptions because they're so expensive. So when you really look at the context of what is happening with the economy, if you're not building your own business, you're doing yourself and your family a terrible disservice because many people's like, I'm not fit to start a business. I don't know how. And I would submit to the, this to you. You fit to eat, right? You fit to drive a car. You fit to have a place to live and you're fit to work a job, which was created by someone who has a business. So essentially a business that you work for is supporting you. That was created by someone else. When you really think about it, because when people, I can't start a business, that's just too risky. Then you get in your car and where do you go to a business someone else started? <laughs> but you starting your own is too risky. But you go to this business someone else that started where they can fire your janky ass at any time. It's really interesting when you think about it. Now, this is your task for your tribe, because the thing is, you know, as we talked about stories in the previous days. You got to have a story. You got to have something to talk about, something to tell your tribe, because I didn't really think my story was remarkable. Actually, for many years, I was ashamed of living in a fucking boarding house. I was ashamed of losing my good job to go out and work in landfills and to work on tar roofs, you know, putting rocks around for tar to go pluck, you know, to work at the UPS headquarters, uh, in the, in the cafeteria for the dishwasher. I wasn't real proud of that shit. I wasn't. I mean, it was a low point in my life. But now looking back at the trajectory, I was doing shit work for a long time. And I was able to, and this is the secret, self-education. Self-education and application is what got me from going to Labor Ready, Labor Force, 4.30 in the morning, to owning a business that supports me and mine. No school, no MBA, self-education and application. There are many people who are really good on the self-education. They have every book on entrepreneurship. They have every uh, productivity manual. They go to seminars. They have all of this information just oozing through their cortex. And they don't go out and get nothing. Don't apply a damn thing. And they wonder why they're not there. Because I see this on Facebook groups. Because there are certain people that were with me. Then they left me. And I see them in like 10, 15, 20, 30 different group, Facebook groups. All like popping up like like gophers. Like head popping up the whole head popping up the whole. And they haven't figured out that getting that information is great. But if you don't do shit with it, it's the same as not having it. Because the longer you don't do shit with it is the longer that you'll never do anything with it and you wasted your time. That's why I tell you, if you come here to 30 days to 2,500 bucks and you don't want to do the exercises, you're wasting your time. You're totally wasting your time. And that's the thing you have to really, really think about. So this is your task because, you know, we're going to talk about this because there's a lot more to tribe building and in, in the context of keeping these things short and digestible because that's one of the things that i learned from feedback like long webinars most people don't listen to them like i did some testing with recorded and that's why i'm selling the recorded webinars and the live ones are free i put out some awesome webinars gave them away for free and the response rate was like nil 
that's why you know I stuck to my policy of like if you want it, you have to pay for it. In the beginning, it was real cheap, and a lot of people were like, damn, I should have got in early, because I understand how human behavior works, and that's part of running your business. I can't make you do what I want you to do, like be here every day, do this stuff. All I can do is put it out and try to arrange my business where I'm bringing the best people, essentially change my energy to draw people who need to be here, who will do the work, who will do the exercises. Because if you do the work and you do the exercises, you will be successful. You will be successful with it. You will do, you will make money. It's that simple. So what you're going to do, this is your task for this evening, because the thing is, since these are going to, the webinars are going to be more pointed, so it's not going to be a lot of, you know, think fast, gotcha stuff. It's because more likely the webinar will be the task because you're going to pull one of those ideas from your business and you are going to, if it's not your main business, and let's talk about that. Say, you don't want, you know, maybe your main business is a, is a hustle. Okay, so you're going to write down an ideal and go with it. Or you don't like the ideals on your list. Guess what? You're going to create a new list. So, if you can't sit down and write down your long term, the story of your long term business, then you're going to have to do your list. You're going to have to sit down for an hour and think of stuff that you can do. And that's going to take you a little bit longer to flesh that out. But I'm telling you, you can start a business today. And if you really think about it, and I, growing up, there was a lady in my neighborhood by the name of Sally Mae Jones, Mrs. Jones. And she always said this. If you live long enough, you're going to get old. So let's talk about this March. 2014 and say you start on this business and it doesn't really start percolating until 10 years from now, which would be March, 2024. You'll be 10 years older, but you have spent 10 years building something because one of the things I love about being creative is a book that I write today could be a movie 10 years from now. But if I don't write that book today, 10 years from now ain't happening. So don't get caught up in it's going to take 10 years or it's going to take six weeks or it's going to don't get caught up in that. Get caught up in every day. I'm going to do a little piece of something that's going to move me forward. So when you look back and you see that long line of action, you're going to get results. Everyone's trying to like wait for the perfect opportunity and I'm going to amp up and then I'll do whatever I'm going to do. No, you're not because your habits will trip you up if you're in the habit of not doing shit. You're going to continue to stay in the habit of not doing shit. It's just how it's going to be. I was that person. That's why I was in the freaking labor pool for so long because I was my mind was so messed up. I didn't understand that if I had the right mindset back then, I could have started the business. I had no clue to the process. I, I could have started the business. I could have uh, easily from a lot of those jobs because, I mean, they were telling me what they were doing. You go to the labor pool, someone has a contract, they gave these people's terms. I, I mean, now I'm like with the business mindset, I can see what they were doing and how they made money. But I was just there to get some money because I wanted some money. I wanted a job so I can get some money so I can get a little food put in my belly because I was hungry. I wasn't really looking at the big picture because my perspective was myopic. And now I can look at it and I say, oh, damn, I could have started. I could have easily. You know, if I had the business mind, go out there and then just contract myself out to these people. It's like, look, tell you what, um, I know you're paying 15 bucks an hour and I'm only getting six. So let's split the difference. Uh, what I'll do is give you my card and here's my card. Here's my phone number. You need me. You call me direct and I'll give you 30 days. No, I'll give you 30 days terms and be like, really treat it like a business so you make more money and then what you do is you just go out and farm yourself out to 15 20 different people and you'll always be working and, and you know some people you'll do 30 day net some people you're just like hey i need my money at the end of the day you know it just depends but you could easily and the thing is before i fell from grace i had a friend named scott who figured the shit out scott figured the shit out before i did long before i did scott was a surgical assistant and he was really, really good at what he did. He was so good that one of the doctors said, Scott, I need you to work for me. What will it take for you to come work for me on certain surgeries? And Scott talked to some people. And this is like 92, OK, 1992. And Scott's like, well, 30 bucks an hour. And the doctor said, OK. So Scott damn doubled his salary 
And he would go work for this doctor once a week, often for eight to 10 hours. Then he was like saying, damn. So Scott, once again, he figured this out long before I did. He quit his job and he worked for the doctor and he set up a temp agency. He set up a surgical assistant staffing agency. And within two years, he went from making like thirty five, forty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And that was his share because he had two partners. Two years because he figured it out. A lot of us don't figure it out until we have to figure it out. Or sometimes we never figure it out. He figured it out. He made way more money going direct. So. With that, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm having a lot of flashbacks these days. Let's see what's in the queue for questions. This is from Manny. I found a glass blower pipes and whatnot. I can post pictures up and have pieces made to order within the price point, making the 30 to $50 profit. I want to see where I can go from the long term. I was thinking Amazon or eBay, but I'm not sure they're allowed even after looking through it um dude glass pipes you know the porn shop they sell pipes figure out who's selling that stuff and go there and present your product i wouldn't even do ebay or amazon with those unless they were like super super unique uh, Dwayne, glad you're covering the hustle on the side along with growing our established businesses. My maintenance business is radically different from eBay sales hustling, but so many concepts carry over. I happily learn to sell X on eBay and it helps me sell service X to commercial clients. Yeah, because the thing is, hustles are temporary. Hustles are usually temporary. That's, you know, even with drug dealers, they all somehow most of the time meet their end. Hey, Glenn, and I hope all is well. I have a part-time business where I offer IT services to small businesses in the Atlanta area, but I need consistent income. I think it's, I still have a fear of leaving the desk. How do you develop the courage to leave Renecrate to do your own thing? I had, okay, the, I'll talk about that. After getting laid off three times in freaking 18 months, I had a whole new attitude. I didn't leave Renecrate and jump into my own thing. I left Renecrate, then I went to uh, business environments, then I went to IMA, then I ended up at Panel Systems, or uh, no, I went from Renecrate to Panel Systems, then business environments to INA. I went to jobs, got certain skill sets, and got the fuck on. I was on a tear. I was working for me when I got that job for Renecrate because I, I just didn't want to be in a position where someone can lay me off again. So it was a plan and it, it took me a minute, but it was a plan. <laughs> I bought a t-shirt. Let's see, Dwayne. FEMA links Waffle House closing to natural disasters level. Seriously, if a Waffle House closed, dude, it's bad there. I would agree because I've never seen a Waffle House close. I've never seen one. It, it's like I've seen them. I've seen one move, but I've never seen one close. <laughs> I hate this job. <laughs> Was the power of six? Uh, that's a productivity exercise. The way part time idea deliver pizza if you want to make money as a side gig. I delivered in my old piece BMW and got extra tips to keep the car going. If you're a hustle delivering pizza, you can easily pull in plenty of t tip money. Other uh, way you work flat roofs, tarring and graveling. Yeah, that is a tough, tough gig, especially in July. Dude, that's going to be the next video that's going up on YouTube. That's, man. Yeah, that was my second week in the labor pool. That shit was a trip. Nope, no four hour webinar. Nope, I'm not doing them. Uh, Dwayne, yep, if you spend a year planning what to do next year, next year still comes. 365 days from now, but if you start doing the day 360 days from now, you'll be a year ahead. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to start doing. Hey, Marcy. Uh, Dwayne, glass blower dude. Glass blowing artists can make a killing via direct sales. Yeah, I wouldn't even mess with Am Amazon or eBay with glass. If you got talent like that, you you can seriously direct sales or wholesaling. I would not even mess with Amazon. IT guy, if you want small business jobs, answer your Craigslist ad. I responded to a couple of CL ads for IT work for small businesses, and I only had one reply. If you answer the ads, you'll get some business. <laughs> 
Uh, Marcy Glendon, thanks for talking about having a couple of hustles while you grow the business. You mentioned starting four businesses. Are three of the businesses the hustles while I grow the main business? And yes, Glendon, education is overrated. Yeah, because the thing is, I'll just tell you, um, with my daughter, she lives with me, I'm starting her an Amazon FBA business. And our goal is within a year to get it to a gross of 300000 which is going to be a net profit of fifty to a hundred. And that's a hustle because it's not going to last forever. And then we're going to work on some other stuff. But you can do an Amazon hustle. You can do an eBay hustle. You can do a you. There's so many hustles that you can do that will. And this is one of the reasons I say live simple. If because one of the biggest reasons that people can't start a business is they're trying to start. They're trying to live the dream while they chase the dream. You cannot live the dream and chase the dream at the same time. And. You know, sometimes you may have to step your life down so you can step your life up. And people are trying to hold on to all this stuff. <laughs> Tony Marshall, can you repost slide four? That was that one. The tribe. And this is going to be, I'm going to talk about tribe building uh, in very, very in-depth Uh, the Wayne. So we always need to keep a set of rolling hustles to keep a new hustle romping up while one is in decline. Yeah, because I'll give you a perfect example. If I had set my dream and sights on that storage auction book, I would be crying the blues right now. I knew that book was going to expire. I know how the net works. Uh, I looked at it the other day and there's like two bad reviews saying, oh, there's this book's, you know, this book's OK if you never started a business. And I'm not even mad at them because they left one star reviews because the, the information has been pushed all over the Internet. If you want to take a week or two or maybe three and go through certain boards or certain blogs, you'll learn everything you need to learn. Uh, the only value my book provides is saving you a lot of freaking time because it's all in one spot. Uh, Josh, have you read the four hour work week by Timmy Ferris? I like how both of you talk about lifestyle design. Yeah, I read it. I peeped it out because the thing is when he had the uh, vitamin business. Typically, the reason I can work three or four hours a day is I did so much work for years that I can live off the dividends of that experience for a person that's never done anything that doesn't have a lot to offer it's going to be real challenging to go straight to four hours and like i said even with me it's not even four hours a week it's really 15 20 which is nothing compared to the shit i used to do in the labor pool that's what i was telling a friend the other day that you know i live very close to the hospital complex and i was like you know i don't have any problems there's somebody that just got entered into that hospital last night they were told they had cancer they're gonna have a surgery in the morning i don't have any problems i got my health i got a lot of great friends i'm a happy person so when you start looking in your life in that context life is pretty good oh yeah uh i will announce when i do the power six webinar That's one of the things about tribe building, because one of the things I learned from a lot of people is you have to consistently put yourself out there. I have gotten serious consulting gigs just for the YouTube channel alone. A lot of stuff I don't even talk about. And it's, it's not even from videos with a lot of views. It's just the content of particular videos that resonate with certain people. And it is 447. You folks have got some tribe building new. Well, actually, you got to write your story. So, oh, there's one more. Uh, Dwayne, one of the simplest yet hardest concepts to grasp is the start of at the goal and reverse your engineer your way back to the steps you need to take to get there. I swing and hammer. The job is right there so often today that I'm focused on emphasize how to start where you want to be and get there. Starting is the hardest part because people are afraid of failing. They're afraid of uh, being laughed at. And just to be honest with you, when you do this stuff, your friends and families, because a friend of mine, the friend with the cookie business, uh, members of her family are talking crap. They're like, oh, she ain't going to start no business. And I was, she's just like, she was just like, she was really pissed off because uh, one of cousin was like, oh, you're not a real business person. They put, I mean, she she's making enough money to pay her mortgage. And the cookie business is going on seven months old now. And she's already making enough to pay her mortgage or save that money 
because she's not spending it. She's just stacking it up because she, you know, she wants to have money and funds available for better opportunities. But people in her family are just like, ah. I'm telling you, it is this. Many of you are going to experience this. I'm just getting you ready. Your family's going to trip because this is so unlike what most people are doing. Uh, one person three years ago said, "What you're doing sounds shady." I'm not kidding you. It sounds shady. So what do you mean it sounds shady? Now, if I was doing this and I had an office downtown Atlanta and I wore a button down shirt and a tie doing the same thing, it wouldn't be shady. It just it's the presentation and it's the packaging. Slide five, the wedding. <laughs> uh, no problem. Uh, Danica, the best thing about the fear of starting is the worst thing can happen if you end up back where you already are if it fails. Yep, that's why there's been a lot of stuff in this course to stretch you and make you fail so you can get used to it. Because I am not going to put a rose on failure and say, oh, it's okay, but it won't, it won't, it won't kill you. So, uh, Shady is the word hustle that causes that. I actually only really started pushing hustle about two and a half years ago. I didn't even use it, and I was still getting that. Um, I will tell you the proliferation of hustle in the words pimping have, they don't have the connotations that they used to maybe with a certain demographic, but, um, it, it's like what I said in maybe week one, whatever you do own it because there was this place and the name of the place was like a cuss where you would just say the name of it and people were like, uh, it was dirty, you know, cheap stuff. That place, that's Walmart. Walmart didn't have a good name when it first started. The only certain kind of people went to Walmart when it first started and they broadened their appeal. But, you know, the, the whole... I had someone in my family tell me that I was a failure because I didn't do traditional stuff because, you know, uh, my sister's an attorney. I don't know what the hell does my brother do. I don't even know. But um, I, don't, I haven't done conventional work in many many years and i'm glad because i can operate in an esoteric environment and not freak out okay so let me do this because i'm bad about this but before ah, ah, ah. Uh, we'll do this because everyone's all right that didn't work because I'm in my account, so it's like there is no more monthly option to 30 days. It is just um, lifetime. And the lifetime's going to change in a week or two, just depending on if I keep on or I stop at 25 and just go straight into what's going to happen with uh, the Facebook group. Oh, I guess I need to send that. So if you want to join the Facebook group, I just sent you a link and you can go ahead and do that. I have to add you, so give me two to two hours to 24 hours to put you in the group and please use the same email address that you use for Facebook. <laughs> That's how I find you. All right. So, um, I want to say thanks for everybody coming out. Uh, this is another great turnout and another great day. All right. This is Glendon and I'll see you on the good side.